Hmm? I, I didn't want you to be like, what what the fuck? These niggas changed the topic on me. That's fine. I understand. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense to me. It's not something that's out the blue. Okay. okay. Well, give me a two seconds to run my mic. <clears throat> All right. I'll turn OBS. All right. Okay. I'm not gonna so start or nothing. Like I'm just nah, gonna, like, no, you're not. Gonna I know you're not straight at this. That's fine. So wait, I think this is like this is like, I think this is like an interesting hmm? idea. We're gonna start. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're done like talking about it. But. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. So twenty minutes, I'm guessing. Yeah, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. No, look, you got that. Yep. Do you want to start right. first, or do you want me to start first? Jeff? So, so I'll just, I'll just lay it out like this. My premise is basically, I do not no people do not have the moral obligation to wear a mask in a grocery store. And your stance would be what, Spencer? That, that you have a moral obligation to wear a mask inside of a grocery store. Okay, so you believe we uh everybody has a moral everybody well, I, has. I a meant mor- I, I meant you hmm? as in like um, I meant you as in like you, because obviously there are some people who like um. For whatever reason, right? Due, due to medical mm-hmm. medical ideas, like if someone's on oxygen, right? I don't think they have a okay. moral obligation to wear a mask in a grocery store. So, so what do you so what do you say? I want to clarify on your stance. You believe that, that you jester mm-hmm. have a have an me obligation. jester. Yeah, so yeah. I have a moral ob- obligation to wear a mask inside of a grocery store. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, can, can and I ask you believe some, like, that people? Wait, 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 quick, But before you do that, and quick question, and you believe that people that have like breathing problems and stuff like that would not have a moral obligation to like be inside of a grocery uh wear a mask instead of a grocery store correct yeah yeah like if you if your lips are fucking destroyed or something right okay and, and, it's and so people have like breathing pain. problems yeah, yeah yeah or if you're on oxygen right it's hard enough or if you're on oxygen yeah i okay. think that there are some exceptions but so you're, you're i'll a tell you this young man i'll tell you this no not completely actually that's why i find a contradiction in your stance right now okay. so in your stance you see uh you talk about people with breathing problems oxygen and things like that i'm actually a certain person who's been exempt from wearing a mask on certain occasions because of the fact that i used to be uh i used to have bad asthma even though i do sports i have to deal with it and carry an inhaler on me at all times mm-hmm. when i do my sports so the problem with your stance is that there's a contradiction there already because me if you're specifying that me i don't that I have a moral obligation to wear a mask inside of a grocery store. I really do not because of the fact that I have asthma. Okay. So th- there are certain degrees of asthma, right? A- as an asthmatic myself, because I also have asthma. I used to, I used to have both a daily inhaler and an emergency <laughs> inhaler. And then I had like the chamber to breathe my inhaler in because okay. it's just so fucking heavy. Right. Okay. So, um, there are obviously degrees of asthma. Would you be comfortable like going into more detail? Yeah, I'll go into more detail. Uh, just off of sleeping the wrong way or like sleeping to the side the incorrect way, I'd probably be hospitalized. So, and so, so, so like, you the, have, the, sleep, the, yeah. you have sleep apnea as well? No, I don't really know what that is, but just like just for laying on the side, just like compressing my breathing a little bit, it struggles with me and I was probably yeah, yeah. hospitalized. So, so sleep that. apnea, so, yeah, yeah. Sleep mm-hmm. apnea Wait, so, is, um, mm-hmm. basically, I'm just explaining it because. I, okay. What you're what you're saying is like very reminiscent of the idea of sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. What sleep apnea? Yeah. Oh, sleep you're right apnea is about. whenever you're like while you sleep, your airways can become clogged in certain ways, and you will okay. literally like choke. And there are there okay. are CPAP machines that pump air in. Is a big nigga, so, right? I also have sleep apnea. Yeah, I, so I, I, know I know you mean. I know you mean. I don't think I don't think it's like sleep apnea, like specifically. It's more like my extreme asthma, which is why a lot of times I like I probably end up fainting just doing a little bit of sports. Uh, the most I could probably do is running a hundred meter without like just actually collapsing on the floor and not feeling the sensation of my legs. So air is not something that reflows to my body on the easiest type of ways. So the reason why I find that to be a contradiction in your stance that I have a moral obligation to be inside of a grocery store with a mask on is because of the fact that I've been exempt on multiple occasions to not have a mask in, in these grocery stores because of the fact that people acknowledge that it's hard to me to hard for me to breathe with mask in general. All which right, is right. even if I have a mask on top of my nose and mouth, I would probably start struggling breathing and my walking would probably be, you know, yeah. bad when I want right. to be at percent potential. Yeah, yeah. So, Jester, I'm not going to hold you, right? Okay. Like, I-, I didn't have knowledge of your medical history, right? I thought you were just a regular old healthy young man. I told you I wasn't going to rat, so I'm just going to concede that. All right, bro. All right, All right. Okay. You, you want to restart if, if a healthy individual has a moral obligation to wear uh, a, you wanna... a mask in a grocery store? So, you want to do if a healthy individual has a moral obligation to wear a mask at the grocery yeah, yeah. store? Yeah, right? a healthy, like, adult. I should make that. Okay, uh, give me two seconds. Let me just close this. 
All right, and I'll restart the recording and everything. Uh, here we go. All right. So <sighs> would, would, would you, let me see. Oh, still... hold on. I'm trying to restart my OBS because yeah, I have yeah. to restart it. No, I'm recording all of it if you just want to. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Right. I just want to have my own recording as well. No, that's okay. Good. So I'll restart it. So my stance will stay, will stay the same. No, people do not have a moral obligation to wear masks inside of a grocery store. And your stance would be that, uh, that, just... that a healthy adult individual has an, a moral obligation to wear masks inside of a grocery store. Okay. Would you like to elaborate on why? Okay. So do you agree that there is a value to human life? Uh, what do you mean by that? Okay. That like human life has a value to it. And that yes. This, that this value is somewhat substantial. Okay. Yes. Okay. Especially of innocent individuals. Okay, I want to specify something real quick on your mm -hmm. stance. So you believe everyone has a moral obligation. So so not like as like obviously asthmatics, right? And people with that type of breathing problems, as we clarified that's why before. I said healthy individuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. So healthy. So you believe everyone has a moral obligation in that type of category well, to wear a mask instead of grocery yeah, store. Yeah, right? let's like let's pluck Joe, right? Mm -hmm. Joe's about to walk into fucking Costco, right? Okay. It it. 2 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. I believe Joe and his girlfriend, Nancy, right, and their homie, Bob, all have a moral obligation to wear masks inside the Costco. Okay. Why is it a moral obligation? Okay. So you acknowledge so, so wait. that... So, quick question. So, to specify something, again, right, do you believe this, like, an objective, like, objectively to be a, something that's morally wrong to not wear a mask inside of a grocery store? Um, I, I guess I shouldn't... Mm... I guess I kind of fucked myself there because I'm not gonna, I told you I'm not going to rat, right? Yeah. I'm just going to go for it. I think I may mm -hmm. have fucked myself on the premise because that obviously yeah. not everyone shares the same moral system. I don't believe, I don't believe that everyone does. Okay. So you think it's a subjective thing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Like, so between, if it's a, but yeah, uh, uh, between our definition of what is moral and immoral, right? These people have a moral obligation. But if you agree, if it's a subjective thing, right? then I don't think if, if it's subjective, it's not objectively to be that somebody has to have a moral obligation. So if your premise is this, right, you have to have the moral. No, it is a moral obligation to wear masks inside of a grocery store. And you agree that it's a subjective matter, meaning it's up in the air. That's like you just like contradicting and went back on your own premise. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. OK, so if that's the case. I, I yeah, want to debate this with you, but I don't know a good way to frame the, like the um the premise cuz obviously I, I, we can yeah. we can get into like um cuz obviously from a utilitarian aspect it makes sense right i see what you mean but i think you have to be a little like cuz i i don't really like in my opinion i don't really like care that much for my own like personal reasons but uh i think like on like debates like that that have to do with like uh the Moral grocery obligation. store yeah. it has to be such a specific you have to sp like specify your premise in such a way that you know so they can't like catch you all right, all right. um let's say it as <clears throat> hmm i don't i don't know a good way to frame this no luck give us something All right, this is the only time I'm gonna ever intervene in a debate. So, what do you want me to? Wait, wait there's no debate. I, I literally just like, just, like Jester just, just got me up. back to back. Yeah, I got back to back. It's like we're on our third debate now. No, like, gotta give us a topic. I know, but I like, I want. Oh, fuck it. All right. So, how about this? How about this? You had the easy side. Vaccine. What's up? Do you have an obligation to get the vaccine? Uh, I'm gonna say. No, I, I don't think so either. Yeah, I, well, I think we. Are, well, masks I don't so. are something that are like researched and unharmful to the majority of the population. All the vaccines are like unresearched, or not unresearched, but they haven't gone through. Um, I know, but like here, how about, this? how about this? Right, how about this? Should the government be allowed to force you to get the vaccine? I don't, I don't know. know what. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm Wait, not hold on. If it's tested, how no? Wait, wait, wait. So if it's tested and proven to be safe and effective, hundred percent effective, one hundred percent like safe, should they be allowed to force you to get it? So a hypothetical super vaccine. Super vaccine, yes. 
This will end. This will end COVID. But you have no choice. The government's going to come in your house. They're going to give you the vaccine. And what did you say the premise was? Um, like, is is the government justified in forcefully um, dispensing a super vaccine? Yeah, pretty much. I would take the affirmative on that. Jester, would you take the Jester? Hmm. Let me see. Okay, so super vaccine that's 100% effective and it cures COVID, correct? Mm-hmm. 100% okay. effective, yep. 100% safe for all individuals. All right, and it cures COVID? Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I, I'll take the negation. All right, okay. So, my, so finally, yeah, I'll, finally I'll we have a good one that isn't a premise. Yeah, so I'll, 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 clar I'll clarify real quick. Wait, who's debating? Uh, me and Myself Spencer. Myself and Jester. This is the third time because I made two. Damn. Oh, just... Damn. Wow, I don't know how I have to feel about that, man. I'm going to be honest. That kind of hurt. I'm <laughs> not. That kind of hurt, bro. Turn my feelings out here. <laughs> he posted the instant transmission gif. That was fucked up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah so uh let me just start my obs up again okay so round three jester yeah round three okay so i'll specify uh you uh the government is completely in the wrong and forcing everybody to take a super vaccine i don't i think it's an inf infringement upon people and your stance would be what spencer um the due to like you t um Due to the usefulness of said super vaccine and its inability to harm individuals, the government is justified through a utilitarian mindset to force individuals to take the vaccine. Okay. So to to like see what like you're specifically trying to say, right? So just because it's unable to harm individuals gives them the right to force that upon people? Mm, well, under a utilitarian frame set, yes. Which is my So problem. what do you mean by that? Okay, utilitarian what what um let me just like Job, yeah, drop the Google definition. Yeah, yeah. Me. Yo, y'all still want the, the same time limit because you'll have, let's see, nine minutes left. No, 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 we start over. Yeah, we start over. All right, it, on, my recording, on my recording, we started over at 10.25. 10.25? It's currently 12.33. What type of time zone you're... are you on? No, not yeah, time zone. Say, not like time zone. Not ahead. reporting time. Oh, I was about a trip. Okay. Utilitarianism. Okay. The doctrine that actions are right if they are useful or for the benefit of a majority. Or the doctrine <laughs> that an action is right insofar as it promotes happiness. And that great happiness of the greatest number should be the guiding principle of conduct. Okay. So you believe that this uh this doctrine is like a promotion of like happiness and stuff like that, correct? Um, For, for the majority of people. Or what is good for the well-being of the majority of people. I mean... Is it specifically for the well-being? So I'll give you a scenario where, like, that's like a co another contradiction of your premise. Somebody who actually has immunities or, like, uh, I, I don't want to say, what is it? Uh, immune bodies? Immunocompromised. Yeah. So, no, no, not immunocompromised. People that actually have, like, bodies, like, uh, antibodies. An oh, antibody, yeah. People Who that have antibodies. antibodies. Yeah. Okay, yeah. People that have COVID-19 antibodies and cannot have COVID-19 are forced to take a vaccine that's literally meaningless to them. No, to be... actually, actually, those who have antibodies can still contract it just at a later point in time. Okay, but I'm giving you a hypothetical where since this is everybody, everybody is forced to, right, under like what your premise is, everyone is mm -hmm. forced to take this vaccine, right? People who already don't have to take the vaccine are forced to take the vaccine. And you know about the COVID vaccines and about it's like a side effects for a while, right? Well, yeah, this is, this is a super vaccine. I know it's a super vaccine, right? Meaning it's safe and it's not going to re, you know, oh, what was it? It's safe and it's, it's 100% uh, what is... safe and 100% effective. Okay. It's 100% safe and effective. You can have a, a vaccine that's 100% safe and effective, right? But, you know, you still have side effects, correct? I mean, not if those side effects are in any way life-threatening or could. No. In okay, no, I'm not talking about life-threatening. Even in compound with other diseases, right? Yeah, I'm not talking about any type of life-threatening side effects. I'm, thinking, I'm talking about side effects that put you down in the bed, you feel rough for a couple of days, things like that. Nothing life-threatening, of course. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I feel like nobody ha should have to go through, like, three days of pain when they're already immune to the to the virus just to be forced for, to take for another vaccine. For a limited amount of time. Okay, but... Th those who if, develop antibodies, and those antibodies are only right a limited mm -hmm. not to mention that the different strains of COVID 19 can still infect okay but these are like really uh 
if we're talking about different strains, I don't know how many different strains that would be in the US, right? To like get specific with it. So I'd go off like the main and strain that spread across the US at first and swept it, right? Uh, so, so SARS CoV 2. Yeah, SARS CoV 2. So let's right. just go off the hypothetical that somebody's well, I mean, already. If it's 100% effective, it would cure or um, prevent all variants. Okay, that's fine. Okay, yeah, and then like under that, then there's no reason to get into that, right? So, oh, yeah. what's Sorry. up? Sorry, yeah. I burped. Sorry. Oh, oh my bad. Okay, okay. So, let's just say somebody is you know immune to COVID, right? Because that is a possible thing. People develop antibodies and become immune to the disease. Well, yes, so, but antibodies are temporary. Okay, but I'm talking about if you're immune to the disease at this time. Yeah. Why? Two to three months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, in two to three months. Yeah, that's how long antibodies stay, and that's how long. You can't contract for like that's the period in which you cannot contract okay. two to three months. So are we are we placing are we placing this uh debate at current time right now? Yeah. Okay. So if we're placing this debate at current time right now, do you uh do you understand about how COVID restrictions have been lifted? Correct. Mm hmm. From in some way, shape, or form. Okay. Yeah, I, I've seen COVID restrictions lifted personally. Right? Okay. Because yeah, yeah. Because. COVID restrictions have been lifted out because the COVID cases are dropping exponentially, correct? Well, they were dropping, but they were also dropping due to the fact that people are getting vaccinated. Well, the, yeah. There, there's a correlation well, there. It's not like they're dropping yeah, because people just stopped stopped contracting it. Mm -hmm. they're no, dropping but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they're dropping because people are getting vaccinated, right? But people that have no need to get vaccinated, and let's just say they have, they have no need to get vaccinated in a two to three month frame, if the COVID cases are so low, what is the reason to get vaccinated in the first place? Okay. So you know, that's, that's a great question, right? Those that are currently vaccinated can still spread COVID-19 as with those with antibodies. So but wait, wait, we're about, talking about, hold up. We're talk, um, oh, people that I, I already know that people could, uh, people okay. who are vaccinated can still spread COVID-19, right. but I'm talking about if you were, you know, had know. antibodies or COVID-19 mm -hmm. and the cases are dropping like flies and they're basically like non-existent to the point where we could just walk around without mm -hmm. masks anymore, yeah, yeah, I got right? You. And you have antibodies for the next two to three months. By that time, let's just say, and go off of this, the cases keep dropping because people keep getting vaccinated. There should be no reason at all why the government has to enforce you to get a vaccine. Okay, L let, me, let me say it under like the utilitarian mind frame, right? So if... Right, because there are still those who cannot get vaccinated because they are immunocompromised, pregnant, under the age of um, X. I think it's some places are starting to vaccinate teenagers, but that's that's somewhat unresearched, right? Mm -hmm. So there are those who who may have antibodies or may not be eligible for vaccination, which this vaccination would work for. That would, oh, wait, and then so then we can vaccinate those that can't currently be vaccinated. And it's better for everyone. On a utilitarian oh, yeah, but... mindset, this this just wins. No, I don't think it wins. So let's go back to the previous example where you brought up that people could still contract uh, COVID even though they were vaccinated and the slight chance of that. We're under the hypothetical of a 100% super vaccine, so that won't mm -hmm. be the case. So let's go under this one. People who don't have, you know, or people who are immune to COVID for the next two to three months, mm -hmm. right? COVID cases were, will be eliminated completely under the, the new... Super the vaccine. new super yeah, vaccine, exactly. right? So if COVID, okay. So yeah. if that's the case, and COVID nineteen is going to be eradicated completely, and you're immune to the, and you're immune to the disease for the next two to three months, and the cases are were already dropping like flies without a super vaccine, we'd have to go like it would be a proper. Uh, I don't want to say assumption, but it would be a, a proper conclusion to come to that there is no need for you to take that vaccine in the first place. And I'll also you could still, I'll, hold up. You and could I also want to like uh, wait for a question. I also want to throw out there that that utilitarianism mindset. I do not agree with it at all. That's fine. It's a framing for me to win the debate. I mean, do the framing, think... the framing is I think morally incorrect. Morals are subjective. Yeah, this I know. More, I know, I know they're subjective for the most but, uh, people. I, I know, but I'm Chester. explaining to you. If it's just wait, but Spencer, the problem with it. The, oh, my, oh my bad. I'm gonna go like lightheaded for a second. So, if just because it's better for most people doesn't mean it's the best for every person. Would you agree with that? Yes, but most people are the majority, and we should okay. function. We should function as the majority, and what's best for the majority. 
So if the majority of people say rape is okay, is that the is that the is that the case? No, because that's not what's in the in the best well being for the majority. So well, that would you said, utilitarian, well, like, for, well um, no, like, not really, because if you agree with subjectivist morals and we go off the hypothetical that the majority believes that rape is okay, right? Is that the best for the people? Well, it, it would be physically not the best for fifty one percent of the population. So no. So, so okay. You, so you know now that, I'm finding you know like I'm finding. You know hmm? that people can be damaged by rape, like physically damaged. Yes, this is what I'm saying. Okay. So, so yeah, if that's so the my case, problem, yeah. If that's but, the but look, case, that's then what while, I'm saying. Like, while their happiness may lie in one place, mm -hmm. the physical well-being of the majority population lies in another, and that's what we would go with. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying about the utility, uh, utilitarianism mindset, right? That something is just right if it just benefits the majority of the population. So we have to discard the rest of the population. So just because 51% of people benefit from this, what happens to the other 49%? Do they get screwed? So Fuck what would them. happen if- Yeah. So, okay, so you agree with 49% of the population dying? That's not what I said. Okay, so if something benefits 51% of the population, the rest of the 49% die. Do you agree with that? I mean, if it benefits the physical well-being, of fifty one percent of the population while killing forty nine in in adverse to killing fifty one in benefiting forty nine, yes, I would take the fifty one. It's best for okay. so forty nine percent people. All right, forty nine percent of the United States would be what? Uh I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So how many people are so I'll do a rough estimate. How many people live in the US? I'm not entirely just, sure. So I'll pull up I'll can, pull up can we, a can we I'll, get like I'll pull it up right now. Where are I'll we going right with now. this? No, no. You're about to see. You're about to see. I'll pull it up right now. Okay. Shaw said okay. around 360 300, million. Yeah. Th uh, yeah. I got like 328 million, right? So we'll say about 49% of that would be around, well, like 130, 140 million people. Uh, it would be more so 160, 170 million. But yeah. Okay. A hundred, yeah, 160 million people. So you're perfectly fine with the death of 160 million people and the benefit of some other people surviving. The benefit of it's literally a matter of we have the lives of X amount of people versus X plus one amount of people. Yes, the X plus okay. one weighs so, out. So check this out. If you have a way of benefiting more than 51 percent and hearing out the rest of the 49 percent. Going off the utilitarian framework, they just wouldn't care about 160 million people. So if you're perfectly fine with the death of 160 million people, I think that's such an absurd claim. Well, I think if, that's it, like if it absurd. saves more than 160 million people, then under a utilitarian frame set, yes. I'd the be the fine. thing I'm telling you, the thing I'm telling you, the oh. utilitarianism frame set is wrong. You're saying it's flawed, but you haven't it's pointed absurd, out a yes, flaw. That, I just pointed out the flaw. There'd be perfectly That's an acceptable. external critique. Whenever you're... No, whenever, I'm, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm critiquing it because it'd be perfectly acceptable of the death of 160 million people under that type of mindset. Jester, I'm telling you why that mindset is incorrect. That's absurdity, right? You're saying... I'm telling you the disagree. claim you made was absurd. Yes, that, that's literally an argument from absurdity. The idea okay. that a claim is incorrect or a mindset cannot be correct because its entailments are absurd to me, right? So wait, absurd to... I'm saying it's absurd, like... In a general sense. Yes, absurdity is subjective. Give me two seconds. I'll pull something up on you real quick. Uh, I just want to get the, the correct word so I don't get caught here. Was, uh... Do you want me to, like, give the logical form of, like, a, an argument My for bad. absurdity for you? Yeah, drop it real okay. quick. Where's that logically fallacious, bro? They'd be hitting different. Appeal to extremes is what they call it. Yeah, just drop the Google definition for me real quick. Oh, logically fallacious is like my go-to. It's basically mm -hmm. like um, X can't be true because X entails Y. It's like a, a basis or an idea from an argument from incredulity. It's like a hop, skip, and a jump away. Okay, so let's go under this, right? The utilitarianism framework would be fine with that type of absurd conclusion. I mean, subjectively absurd, yes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, like, under the utilitarianism definition that you gave me, as long as it benefits even 50.5% or 51%, right, it'd be perfectly okay with the 
absurd conclusion that would be the death of 160 million people, correct? Yes, under your own idea of what is absurd. Okay, so what? Wait, wait. if you're just going off under my idea, what is your idea of what is absurd? Um, not. I don't know. I wouldn't so, know. I wouldn't know too absurd. specifically. Absurdity is something I kind of just see, and I'm like, man, I think that's whack. Okay, so I'll just drop that. that that's what I'm saying. Like, absurdity is subjective. Okay, it's something being ridiculous. So, you don't. I, I'll just like critique. I'll, I'll question you real quick. You don't see the death of 160 million people being something that's absurd or out there. Not if it saves 161 million. Hmm. So, if half the population of the globe dies, you don't think that's something that's ridiculous and just, like, insane? If more than half the population survives because of it, no. Just a 0.5% more? Yes. And you're perfectly okay with that? Yes. Okay, why? Genuinely. Like, a utilitarian mindset is how we have, or how I believe we have to operate. Because if we do not operate by a utilitarian mindset, then it would just be the good of those who make decisions... Is what we operate under. So under your moral set, Spencer, do you believe death is okay? It, it depends on why. What what, what do you believe justifies what do you believe justifies death? Okay, so if if it's in self defense, at the if it were if if lacking death were to come at the expense of more death, right? Or um I don't know, that's all I can think of as of right now. So I, I see if lacking death will come at the expense of more death, right? Yeah. So under this utilitarianism framework, which I'm critiquing right now, the problem I see, right? Do you if somebody or if there is another conclusion or another scenario where you could benefit more people or potentially even save everyone, the utilitarianism framework just wouldn't care? No, if you could benefit more people or save everyone, you would take that option under utilitarianist mindset. But isn't it that the actions are right if they are used for the benefit of the majority? So they're, for they're the not benefit about benefit of like, the majority. If okay. more people could be saved, that would be to a greater benefit or to a benefit of a greater majority. Uh, so what I'm proposing actually is that let's just like throw this out uh, another hypothetical, another scenario, uh, real quick. So. After this, let's can just we say please, like, conclude this idea of utilitarianism. Yeah, we yeah. We have like the three why just... minutes left in the debate. Okay, I got. It. Actually, um, I mean, if you feel you've done well enough here, we can. Like, that, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So uh, I think well, can we just like conclude? Yeah, we that's have fine. Time for conclusions. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that I not only justified why a utilitarianist mindset, like, is the most beneficial because it's literally just benefiting the most people in the best way right but also why this idea of um forcing a super vaccine onto individuals right would follow this mindset and why we should use this in making of policy or broad decision making because the entailment of lacking utilitarianism is that those in power get to make the decisions at the expense of others right so i okay. believe i won this debate pretty clearly due to that um i'll let jester conclude now oh we're concluding the debate yeah okay because there's only three minutes left and most of the times things are like oh you can't conclude time's up all right so i believe i won the debate over yeah i know, I know what you mean yeah i believe i won the debate for a couple different reasons i attacked the framework of like utilitarianism when it was and why it would be absurd i think i did a perfect job of attacking the uh the mindset of more equals correct and we already agreed on like subjective morality either way uh i picked around about what the specifics of uh spencer's stance was about a super vaccine and about people that i already believe like my uh my stance was even attacked at all i just provided a hypothetical about a people who are immune to vaccines in a scenario where if the vaccine not being 100 percent effective completely let's just say is wiping down covid making it making it unnecessary for people to have to wear masks anymore and making lifting restrictions in the first place which was just like make no need for anything at that point under the hypothetical that we go under which is the super vaccine right there would be completely no reason to even vaccinate nor wear a mask nor do anything related to like 
COVID in the first place. Because if you're immune for the next two to three months under this hypothetical super vaccine, because the regular vaccine is already clearing COVID and lifting restrictions, there's no reason to get vaccinated, which is what I've, I believe I, why I won the debate very thoroughly just through that. I don't really believe that like hypothetical was truly attacked. I don't believe my stance was truly contradicted nor attacked throughout this entire debate. I feel like I had a good control of the tempo of it either way. So that's why I think I won the debate. Uh, that, was that was a good, good debate, debate gesture. Debate. Yeah, I was about to say the same shit. I, I do think you controlled the tempo really well. I, I think you got me away from attacking your argument too well. I think I did attack it, but I don't think I attacked it as well as I would want. Yeah, I was trying my best to do that. Dang, right. This place is really magical, bro.